Hey guys, what's up? It's Colin from CC Mega Productions, and today I have another sweet tutorial for you guys. It's a muzzle flash. We're going to be using After Effects, and what's great about this tutorial is I all the elements I used for the video I am giving to you, including the footage, the muzzle flash, the smoke, the shell, all that great stuff. So the link for that will be in the description. It's Media Fire, and it's right here. Just click the link click download it'll give you this uh, zip file extract it and you'll have the muzzle flashes the shells the sound effects and your footage the footage that I use just in case you uh, can't shoot your own footage you just wanted to try it out and I'll go ahead and open after effects and here's my finished product there's a shell kicking a slide kicking back sorry and a shell popping out ejecting and a pretty nice muzzle flash and smoke so as you can see as I scrub through here we got the brightness on my face and the camera's moving a little bit so we had to, we're gonna have to do a little motion tracking and I know you guys uh, like to see that because most of you don't know how to do that and so you can see the, the smoke looks pretty nice I filmed all the stuff my stuff myself it's pre keyed uh, it's free I'm just giving you a link to it so um, there's the final footage uh, there's here's the rifle shell that I've created in case you want to do a rifle muzzle flash and it's pre-keyed so you can see scrubbing through it just rotates in one point of space and same for the uh, pistol shell it's pre-keyed and you can that's what we're gonna be using because I have a pistol and here's the muzzle flash side and there's the smoke and it is pre-keyed as well but we're still gonna set the boiling mode to screen just to make it look a little nicer and here's the a front muzzle flash just in case you want to do a front muzzle flash and once again all pre-keyed and pretty sweet so let's get started I'll start by uh, you can start by opening up the folder yeah, I shouldn't have done that opening up your, the muzzle flash pack dragging the footage into After Effects. I already have all the muzzle flashes and shells and stuff just for your sake of time. And drag it into a new comp. That little box right there will create a new composition with your footage. Uh, the exact time length and with all the frame size dimensions of your footage. So as you can see starting off uh, just me kicking back a gun. And let's go ahead and uh, motion track this so we can build upon that. and. First off, create a null object uh, by clicking in this gray area and select, selecting new uh, null object, or uh, just delete that, or you can go up here and click layer new null object. It's all the same, doesn't really matter, um, just up to you. Now I'll go into my tracker after selecting my uh, layer, the footage, and if you don't see this tracker right here, you might see it down here, right there. Uh, but I don't I don't really like things being right there because uh, I like my uh, time layer being pretty long and if you don't see that you can go to window uh, tracker uh, is not there and it should pop up usually it'll be down here in this area so while your layer is selected click track motion and my footage rotates a little bit so I'll hit rotation and you want to drag your points over to a point of contrast um, I like these black dots in uh, these pieces of wood over here because they provide a pretty nice area of contrast. Next, you want to select the outer box and make it a little bigger just by uh, dragging one of the corners. And this will allow more space for After Effects to track and it will give you a better track. So also make the inside ones a tiny bit bigger, but if you make the inside ones giant, it will take like two seconds of frame to motion track alright so go ahead and hit play to track and as you can see it's doing a pretty good job of staying on those points not really moving around too much and if yours is you can stop it uh, drag it back maybe change something up a little bit and then just hit track forward again and it'll just retrack over everything that you just did so just let it track and let After Effects do its thing shouldn't take too long unless you got a long track and it's done so 
I have a null three right here, and so click edit target and click null three or your null object to, if it's not already selected, and then click apply X and Y. Um, so then you can see this red box over here will just stay in place, and so now anything that we parent to the null object will move with the null object and uh, be motion tracked to the scene. So let's go ahead and import the muzzle flash side. As you can see, it's pre keyed here. I gave you a couple frames just in case you want them. Um, then just drag the endpoint down. And I shoot the gun around. Let's go right there, just drag the muzzle flash over. Then drag it over on the screen. And you can position it to about where you like. And then click, uh, hit toggle switch modes down here if you don't see your uh, modes. And then click here. And then go up to here and click screen. And the reason I do this is because it just kind of blends it more with the environment and the lighting that it gives. You can click, uh, you can just see it as I click normal again. It looks a little harsh and the edges don't really blend very well. And so when you click screen, everything looks pretty good. You can also click add. But I'm a more of a screen fan. Uh, so now you can see uh, it looks already pretty decent just because the smoke is really what sells a great muzzle flash. And so, but you can see that the smoke is kind of moving around with, without really being a part of the environment. So what we're going to do is grab the pick whip tool and drag it onto the null object and that'll just parent this and give it all the motion from the null object or you can uh, click the drop down menu and click null 3 whatever you want to do it's all the same but just I kinda like the pick whip tool a little bit more so now you can see the smoke does not fly off onto space randomly it sticks to the environment and looks like it's there alright next what we're gonna do is create the slide uh, moving back so what we're gonna do is select your footage and then hit Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. I'm on PC, so Control D for me. And then you want to drag your endpoint. Oh, never mind. Uh, Right-click the layer. Actually, first I'll rename this to Slide just so you don't get confused. Uh, it actually helps a lot and helps you keep more organized. So right-click the Slide layer and click Time, uh, Freeze Frame, and that'll make everything uh, everything on that layer one frame. So now we can drag this down. Uh, just to one frame. I'll actually make it two frames, one right here. Uh, I'll tell you why in a second. So right here, go ahead and uh, hit G on your keyboard for the pen tool or just click the pen tool up there. Um, and make a mask around, around the gun kind of try to get the, a little bit of the contour of the gun and there you go so right now we'll hit the drop down menu and go into transform and then just go ahead and select all these by clicking over here and just dragging down and hit a keyframe for all the stopwatches so just go ahead and drag it uh, where it should about be and go ahead and click F on your keyboard which will uh, pull up your feather and you can feather it out a tiny bit and that'll make it look a little bit better and so the position right now is right here and then go one frame forward and then if you uh, enable motion blur in your comp and enable motion blur for the slide layer you can drag it back and you can see that it starts to have a lot motion blur so if you drag it back way back here the motion blur is extreme but where you want it to want to drag it uh, it'll just give you around the right amount of motion blur and since we don't want it right here uh, we can just go ahead and drag this layer here I just uh, do that so it's the motion blur on the slide is pretty accurate to what it would be like in real life so next hit W on your keyboard to rotate it because it looks a little well off to me and then drag it back down and that looks pretty good maybe up a little bit more so there's that slide and next we'll do the shell so the pistol shell just 
drag it right in on top and go ahead and parent it to the null three and just find a good spot to you that looks that looks like it would be a good spot to start this I'll start right there so alt left bracket to trim that down and you can rotate it with the clicking W to rotate it and then uh, you can hold shift and you can scale proportionally if you drag down on the edge of the clip so just scale it down a little bit go ahead and make it a 3d layer so we can do some 3d transformations uh, put it around where it would be if it was popping out of the gun probably around right there and we're also going to do what we did on the slide so we're going to drag it over here we're going to enable the motion blur and then put it like over here a little bit and then we want to hit transform and then hit keyframes for all these and drag them over to the first frame so now if you move this right here it already starts to have a little bit of motion blur you can see it looks pretty good and so now you can go ahead and drag it back since you don't need that first frame so there's the muzzle flash you can rotate it not, not muzzle flash shell apologize there's the shell with motion blur and now just go I don't know about 10 frames or so and uh, drag it down off the not 10 frames but drag it down off the uh, viewing area and you're gonna say that looks retarded but what you're gonna do is you're gonna dr drag these little curves like this these little dots so it looks like it's kinda popping out of the gun and it's easier when you just have two frames for a shell because when, if you have more than one you'll start fidgeting with it and nothing will look the right so I'll go ahead and pre-render and see what this looks like as you can see that's a little too fast just kinda shoots straight down so if you drag this keyframe over it will make that fall a little bit slower so now let's take a look and see how that looks that looks pretty good um, you can see it's boom. yeah that, that looks decent enough for now we might mess with it a little bit later alright so next let's add the brightness on my face by once again duplicating your footage um, alt left bracket to trim the clip and make it two frames so we can make the glow uh, drop out so go ahead and set the blending mode on I'll rename this to brightness and what I like to do to keep me even more organized is click over here and you can change the color to yellow so that just kinda makes you think oh yellow is brightness so go ahead and change the blending mode on this to add and if you don't see it toggle switch modes again and click add and this will brighten up the areas that you want bright so if you go go into the pen tool again by clicking G or clicking over here, you can mask around areas that you think would be lightened by the subject. And so I'll probably pick the gun in my hands and my face. It doesn't have to be too good of a mask because you're going to feather it out quite a bit. Um, and then I'll create one more down here on my chest area. So then hit F on your keyboard to feather, and then on mask one, which is my face, just feather it out to where it looks. I mean, you can feather it way out, but just feather it out where you think, where you get rid of the harsh edges and looks what you want it to look like, and then do the same for the second one and the bigger areas you have usually the more you want to feather that's just a general guideline so my shirt I should probably feather quite a bit so now you can see as I scrub through uh, the brightness is on my face while I shoot and but it's still the same brightness right here in the middle so you can go ahead and hit T to bring up your opacity 
hit the stopwatch over here to set the keyframe and then go to the last frame and click zero so now in the middle it'll be 50 percent so it'll kind of be like boom really bright and then kind of fade off i learned this from freddy w so pretty good way of doing it so what also i'm going to do is uh set the blending mode on the pistol sh uh on the slide to add because it needs to be bright too and if you just mas mask out the brightness layer then it won't mask out the slide so there is the slide going back the muzzle flash and the shell so next what we're going to do is add some uh, more like I don't know really what to call it but it'll enhance the muzzle flash a little bit so if you go into muzzle flash and you hit control D to duplicate it or command D and then shrink it down to one frame by dragging the endpoint so it gives you a little bit more of a beefy muzzle flash and then you can go to your effects and presets tab and uh, type in tint uh, drag it over onto your muzzle flash, muzzle flash you just created and pick an orangey color around there and then do the same thing from for here and that just kind of makes it look a little bit more like a flame I guess you can also uh, change the amount you want to tint to how, how orange you want it to look but if you make it really orange what you also want to do is you want to create a new layer uh, a new solid layer uh, and I'll make it orange just like the muzzle flash and oops, sorry. And then hit alt left bracket to trim it and alt right bracket to two frames just and do the same thing for the opacity that you did for the uh, other brightness so now if you set this to add you can uh, mask around uh, the same areas and that you did for the face and it'll give it more of an orangey tint because you kind of just set the flares to be orangey so I'll feather this one out and you don't have to do this I think it look, makes it look a tiny bit better this might be a little much on my face I'll actually go ahead and set the opacity at the beginning down to like 70 uh, let's do 50. Alright, that looks pretty good. So now it kind of looks more orangey glow to my face. And the muzzle flash looks um, a little bit more fiery. You can also change it if, I mean, you could really, let's say you're doing a laser gun and you want it to be green. You can make it green. But for the sake of this. Or you can do red to make it. Uh, look more fiery but I think orange usually looks a little bit better than red and but you can also play with this I'll play with it a little bit and drag it down and you can duplicate this uh, duplicate the layer by pressing uh, control D again and you can make it look even more fiery all right that is pretty much all I have for you guys uh, don't forget the media fire link is down in the description and download that puppy. I know it'll help you out. It's got a bunch of pre keyed free stuff. But the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to add in some sound effects, which is pretty easy. Uh, go into the pack and go to sound effects, pistols. Uh, click all the pistols in here except the reload and trigger click. And drag them in. And then drag them into your composition. And just drag them to the first frame because I already have them pre-rendered out. So now if you pre-render, you can watch your beautiful muzzle flash. So, alright, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, hope you enjoyed the stock footage. Took me a while to create. Um, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.